Hey y'all, had to write it down just in case I got nervous, so bear with me. <laughs> All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity today to gather and commune in service to you and others. In this moment, I am reminded of Matthew 18, 20 that says, Where two or more gather in my name, I am with them. How comforting to know, Lord, that you walk among us today. Chronicles 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear it. Forgive their sin and heal their land. And I cannot think of a better cause or a more jo needed joint effort than for us to heal our land. Father, I ask you to cover the people in this room today. Look into our hearts and minds and heal the wounds that this extraordinary life may have left behind and enable us to return that same healing grace to our communities. Father, we thank you for this bountiful meal and fellowship and ask that it nourish and strengthen our bodies and our bodies to your service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Beth. Please take a seat. Uh, we've got Sandra Owensby coming to welcome our visiting Rotarians and guests. And uh, as she's on her way up here, I just want to remind everybody about the car bucket sitting on your table. Please give generously to the car fund. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. We have two visiting Rotarians today. We have Senator Joe Wilson from the Casey Club. Where are you, Senator Wilson?
executed on what is meant to me. Past President Jim LaVenis introduced me to the Columbia Rotary Club in March of 1997. Smith Freeline Moving and Storage, my employer, had asked me to relocate to Columbia at that time, and uh, they tasked me with getting involved in the Columbia business community. I've always been interested in service to others. Jim quickly convinced me that I could accomplish two goals by achieving one objective, that being to join the Columbia Rotary Club. By the way, if you were introduced into this club by Jim Levinis, would you raise your hand? And trust me, guys, the list goes much further than this. What a legacy that man left to this club, Jim Levinis. Which brings me to the first of many of the benefits uh, to me of belonging to the Columbia Rotary Club, which is fellowship. I'm going to talk a, a few memories from members who are no longer with us. Um, and I would go back again on fellowship. Who can who could ever forget the new member introductions done by Lester Bates? <laughs> and then my first introduction to clock uh, management was not from a basketball coach, but from Key Powell, who would sit right here where Louisa is. And as I was president, we then met from one to two. But at two minutes to two, Key was tapping that watch. Let's get it started. At 1.55, if we were still with the speaker up, Key was tapping that watch. Let's wind it up. I think one time he broke his lens tapping. <laughs> but anyway, and then just the love of my fellow man that I learned from Dr. Charlie Sloan. The pure joy of calling Jim Whitmire my friend. What a wonderful guy. And so many in this club are. And all of you in, in this room, thank you for what you do to the club, the fellowship, and to everybody around. And that brings me to the second major benefit of this club, which is programs to me. The list of speakers I've heard in this room is unbelievable. For a service club, even more unbelievable. We've had former First Lady Barbara Bush. We've had senators, congressmen, governors, military and business leaders, such as our program today. I was once quoted in the Wall Street Journal from this very podium. In the Wall Street Journal. We were having Senator Joe Biden, Biden in 2007, John Durst was president, and Senator Biden made an unofficial announcement that he was running for the 2008 presidential election. John had asked me to chair the Christmas Club party that year, which we were having at the South Carolina Department of Archives. So John, on this particular Monday, asked me to come up and pitch the Christmas Club party, which I did quite a bit of back in those days. So I came up and I was talking about the, the fun we were going to have, the fellowship, and the entertainment. And Roger Stroop had promised to set out certain displays just for the club so we could view them. And I specifically mentioned that we would have the original document of the South Carolina Article of Secession now, which I thought was a pretty big deal, that we could actually view that as this document at the Christmas Club party. So I sit down, Senator Biden comes up to speak, and he opens his address to the club with where else in Col but Columbia, South Carolina, would you have a Christmas party to celebrate seceding from the Union? <laughs> the Wall Street Journal ran an article about his unofficial announcement and it opened with that very statement. Now, nowhere did I get credit in the Wall Street Journal, but, you know, that's, that's another thing. But um, I, I was going to say two of my all-time favorite programs that I, I, I've got to throw a, a, a little caveat in there and add a third. Whenever Congressman Wilson was here, it was always one of my favorites. So, uh, but anyway, uh, the two programs that stand out in my mind 
was the year I was president, 2004 and 5. Um, <clears throat> our son John was deployed to Iraq as an infantry officer. Um, so it was a, a pretty difficult year, but this club just carried me through. But we had the U.S. Army uh, 82nd Airborne Corps come down from Fort Bragg. I talked to Cal Sewell uh, prior to that program, and we set this room up especially for them. They came in in two platoons, one left, one right. They marched in through those doors, so we left an aisle. And as they came marching in, there was a low hum, a pitch of a C-47. And then the jump master said, open doors. That pitch rose up. You could hear the engines increase. Then they went through the countdown. They jumped. They sang. They performed. It was a magnificent program. Uh, they did a mix of, of current songs, the hits, and some patriotic songs. They were singing uh, America the Beautiful, sitting Stephen was. And I had a little crocodile tears coming down my, down my eyes. Um, but I was thinking of the many blessings we have in this country and how fortunate we are. And then you have those in Iraq, Afghanistan, and John and his fellow uh, comrades in arms were over there. And it just, you know, I just really had this, uh, as I do now, a little crime down to you. Then they closed with Lee Greenwood's uh, God Bless the USA. And when they got to the last line, it was on the second chorus. I will remember this like it was yesterday. When they got to the second chorus, and I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend you, defend her still today. With that, John Asman is sitting there, was sitting there. And he stood up at a teacher. And within two seconds, this entire club was on its feet, honoring these young fighting men, those that were deployed, and I completely lost it up here. It took a while to recover, but I, that moment lives with me forever. The second of those programs is when our son John returned from his deployment in March of 2005. Um, that one I will remember as well, and I'm fortunate enough to have Jim Covington did a, a DVD of that that we still have and watch today. But the whole year serving as the club's president was special. This club supported me, prayed for John's safety, and basically carried me in their arms through the years of his deployment. So I need to wrap this up. But I want to say this, particularly to the newer members, but once you get out of an, uh, out of an endeavor, it's directly proportioned to the efforts that you put into it. Remember that when asked to serve in a service project or a committee, this is a big club. You volunteer, your efforts will be recognized, and you will be rewarded for what you put into it. Um, one of the special things that uh, John and I get to share, we have a number of things, but we're one of seven father and son panels that have served this club as president since 1916. Um, we're one of seven. Uh, I don't think Jim Reynolds is here today, but his father, Jim served in 93, his father in 1955. Michael Kahn, would you stand? Michael served in 1998, his father Hal in 71. I served in 2004. John, would you stand? 2014. And Andrew, uh, Andrew, 2006, his father Crawford served in 1958. It's quite a, an honor to be associated with, with that group of guys. Uh, lastly, be content in your life. When you're contented, you have a, an inner joy, 
And with that, you can realize how many blessings God has bestowed upon you. In 97, when I was asked to relocate to Columbia, I'd been in Spartanburg basically my entire adult life. Um, I really didn't see the blessings. And I was a little uh, concerned about it and the challenge that lay in front of me. But that move, uh, that move was made professionally. I never really relocated to Columbia, but I spent my business life here. And uh, that move led to the membership of the Columbia, Ro Columbia Rotary Club, which is one of the greatest blessings of my life. I'm going to close with a quote from Ellen Goodman. Um, I'm in the movie business, so this is rather appropriate. <clears throat> There's a trick to a graceful exit. It begins with a vision to recognize when a stage in your life is over. It means leaving what's over without denying its importance to our lives. It involves a sense of future, a belief that every exit is an entry, that we are moving on rather than moving out. Thank you and God bless. Kirk, thank you so much. We wish you all the best in your retirement and that uh, we all honor the legacy of your family in this club. John, great to have you here, as always. Um, on a lighter note, much lighter note, I'd like to welcome up John Asman. We've got a lot of good news uh, to report, and um, he's going to share that with you. He's offering health and happiness. John. Thank you, President Stephen. Um, I think the president, Steve. It's a good afternoon to be here. It's a little dreary on the outside, but uh, warm and fuzzy and close on the inside. Uh, I've got some notes. Of, uh, I asked some folks if uh, they had any information they wanted to share. A couple of them is um, Ken Childs shared this with me, and maybe some of you already uh, are aware of this, but uh, uh, Craig Witherspoon, I guess, who's the superintendent of District 1. Oh, is he back here? All right. Uh, as I have to quote Ken, he said, he's one hell of a saxophone player. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, maybe some interlude might be for health and happiness or sometime in the future. Bring that horn and we'll listen to that. Enjoy that. Thanks for sharing that uh, talent. And uh, news that uh, uh, there's been a, a purchase of the gourmet shop. And that's been purchased by Amy Beth Franks. So uh, that's exciting. And, uh, <laughs> so keep those cards and letters coming. Now. <laughs> All right. And uh, Hotel Trumbull, I guess that is owned by Rita Patel and her husband. And uh, that they received an award from Chamber of Commerce, Columbia Chamber of Commerce, as, I guess it's called the Golden Mail Award for. Uh, improvements and related to uh, historic buildings, and so that's exciting and good for them. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Another is um, Hal Stevenson. Where's Hal? John. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hal has been named the Small Business Person of the Year, Grace Outdoor Advertising. <laughs> Happy birthday this Saturday. What time were we supposed to be there? <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, it's already been mentioned that uh, our representative Joe Wilson is with us. Uh, I won't tell you that other thing I was going to say about Joe. But, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, did, uh, I did speak to uh, our representative about a newspaper article at, uh, down in. Did, did, did you see in the state newspaper John Monk's article about the event down in 
uh, Bates Park Bleasel. It's a good article. A good article. And uh, I did not know this story. I don't know how many others. Does anybody that knows about this, did they know about it before talk yesterday, if they read the article? That's a small show of hands. But there's a, uh, uh, I'll just read a few clips from it, but it is regarding what happened to uh, a young man back in uh, 1946 down in Baseburg, Leesville. It was a young black man that was out of the Army, just recently discharged. And unfortunately, during a bus ride or some altercation, the local police official down there severely beat him to the point at which he lost his eyesight. And, uh, you know, and it went through proceedings, and I guess the lifestyle and how things were handled in those years was quite different. But uh, last Saturday, there was a gathering to, in, in honor and in memory of uh, what happened there in terms of uh, it transpired into the civil rights, some ch changes, major changes in this country as a result of what had occurred there. And I just, I'm just going to read a few uh, parts of this article that John put together. Tears, history, and vows to do better mixed Saturday in the small Lexington County town of Batesburg, Leesville, as a plaque was unveiled memorializing the 1946 savage beating and blinding of Isaac Woodward. Some 20 speakers gathered, including our very own commander of Fort Jackson, General Wilford Beagle, and they talked about Woodard's blinding as well as the good that eventually flowed from it, the good that helped lead to the dismantling of segregation nationwide. Uh, I thought it was interesting, I'm going to have to listen to this song, but uh, uh, the lady from Charleston and Angela Easterly, you may be familiar with her, had a folk tune, Isaac Woodward's Eyes, and here is one line from that. Remember, this was a man that was discharged from the army. And he was on his way home. He helped defend the nation from a fearful enemy, then came home to find he still wasn't free. Uh, very poignant. Um, I know we're getting close on time, but uh, if you didn't see that article, look back at Sonny's paper. Thanks for sharing that with us. I did have a string of jokes that I checked with uh, Rex on. He said they'd be okay to use. Rex will but I'll show those when next time around. Thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate your flexibility on that and your preparation as always. Um, I'd like to welcome past President Hal Stevenson to the podium. He's going to introduce our speaker today. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, thank you, John, for recognizing that award. It was the uh, Small Business of the Year Award. And, uh, it's really my wife, it was not me. I'll take credit, but it was, she's the one. Y'all know me for a long time, I've never run any, won any awards. And now that Deanna's working and running the show, we're winning awards, so. Okay, I'm going to introduce to you guys Kristen, Kristen Beckham, who is the External Affairs Representative for Dominion Energy in South Carolina. She handles all state government relations, public relations, media relations, and economic development. Uh, for the state and also for 50 counties. Is that still true? Uh, Kristen leads the uh, also the Charitable Foundation Regional Investment Board. So some of you nonprofit people may want to drop off your card and get to know her here a little bit afterwards. Um, she's also a Rotarian. She's in the Vista Club, which meets on Main Street on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock. And she's also on the board of directors for the American Red Cross. She serves for the uh, Public Affairs Committee of the Junior League and also is on the sponsorship chair of the United Way of the Midlands. Um, she's also a board member of the Alumni Association of Colleges Charleston, where she graduated. She is a graduate of Leadership South Carolina. Uh, she's a member of Leadership South Carolina Board of Trustees. In 2017, she was named one of Columbia Business Monthly's Best and Brightest, 35 and under, and as a 2017 Woman of Influence. Um, she has a BA from uh, College of Charleston and a uh, master's 
from the University of Georgia. Uh, Bob, you'll be glad to hear that, to so come up and read her. And she lives here in Columbia with her husband, Chris. She's from Hilton Head. She's a South Carolina girl on their first South Carolina hire, I believe, when they bought the uh, gas transmission line. So, Kristen, come on up. Kristen, back up. fellow Rotarians, Congressman Wilson, and lots of friends in the audience, so I, I, I still not throw eggs at me as we spoke today, so count on that. <laughs> but it's great to be here. Um, just want to share a little bit about Dominion. I know uh, Dan Weekly came and spoke with you last year, and he sends his regards. Dan was our VP of, um, of basically the Southeast, and he has been sent back to Richmond. He is now our VP of Innovation. So he is working to push our um, our strategic thoughts and what we're doing across the 18 foot 18 state footprint. So um, you have him. He's going to be the VP of Policy, and we have one of our brilliant MIT engineers who's going to be the VIP of Innovation and Engineering. So we're looking at new ways to to listen to our constituents and to hear what you need and what type of energy you want. Every state is different. Every every. Um, Every region's different. So he's going to be doing that. He sends his regards. So thank you for letting me come speak with you today in his stead. Um, everyone should have a little one pager. So that's going to be a brief overview of the merger. Um, as you know, Dominion Energy, at the beginning of the year, we finished our merger and completed the merger with SCEG Scanner. Um, so I want to make sure you have that. Um, if you have questions about it as we go along, please ask. I'm happy to answer any question you have. Um, we did over 600 community meetings last year, and we're doing the same thing this year because there have been some changes in the plan of customer education and the maintenance plan. Um, so we want to make sure you know what we're doing, and if you have questions, we want to be here as a resource for you. So I want to start out by telling you a little bit about Dominion. Um, our five core values are safety, ethics, excellence, one Dominion, and our newest core value, which came out last year, embracing change, similar to what I was talking about with our new innovation team. So we, uh, we believe in teamwork, we, wanted, we want to, um, it, it, part of the embracing change is bringing all the new employees, all 6,000 employees that we have um, from SCANA and to the Dominion footprint. So Dominion at large, we're in 18 states. So before, just curiosity, how many of y'all um, had heard of Dominion before last year when we were in the news a lot? Good, good. Here. So we have, we're in 18 states, we have over 21,000 employees across that footprint. And with the addition of the 6,000 employees here with, with SCANA. So many people think of SCANA, they think of just SCENG. They think of South Carolina, where you, um, hopefully, many of you are, are customers and uh, are soon to get the, uh, the rate relief that we're going to be providing. But it's in North Carolina too. The PSNC, the Public Service Commission of North Carolina, is a, is a major natural gas company that SCANA owned. And they own Scanner Marketing in, in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's a three state um, acquisition that Dominion recently acquired at the beginning of the year. But four years ago, Dominion came into South Carolina, and that's when I came on board with the company. Um, we purchased Carolina Gas Transmission, which was a subsidiary of Scanner then. So it's about 1,500 miles of natural gas transmission lines in 32 counties. And before we acquired Scanner, we also have, and still have, as far as I know, um, the largest solar project in the state. It is about 72 megawatts of solar, about 1,000 acres of solar down in Jasper County. So that's who we are in the state, and obviously now um, have SCEG too. But a little bit about us. You know who we are as a company, or in 18 states, but who we are as a culture. Um, we are really proud of our, our work in the communities, and we want to be a good community <coughs> partner to each and every one of you. So, to, how to your point, for all our nonprofit friends, if you don't know Dominion yet, I'm, I have a stack of cards up here, would love to talk to you about it. We want to be invested in the community. We've been ranked best for vets. One in five of our new hires is a veteran. Um, we have, in the past year, well, in 2017, we gave about $28 million in charity giving. Here in um, Scana Service Territory, they give about $3 million out a year in charitable giving. And Dominion is committed to giving a million dollars more per year to support the community here, right here in South Carolina. So we're really excited about that. I'm thrilled to be able to have a deeper dive and a bigger investment in the community. But we don't just give dollars. We give our time as well. All Dominion employees, so now all as Southern Energy Group, all the SCNG employees, um, all get one paid day of volunteer time a year. So this, whatever nonprofit of their choosing, 
It's all company time, but they get paid for it to go work with a nonprofit that they support. Dominion also supports, we have Dominion Energy Days where we'll go out and do a big community project. We've done those every year right here in, in the Midlands and we'll continue to do that and expand and deepen our presence with the addition of the, uh, the other employees we have. Uh, just for your knowledge, we only had about 115 employees here in South Carolina prior to this merger, so we're, we're planning to do big things ahead. In fact, um, last year we, we volunteered over 125,000 hours across 18 states. That was, that was employee volunteer time. So plan to bring that here in a deeper and bigger way. Any questions about us as nonprofit and our nonprofit support and community support before I get into some of the other details? Don't be shy. I think y'all want to hear about, I'm pretty sure I've been asked about a thousand dollar check. That's probably what y'all want to really hear about, am I right? <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. But before I do that, one of the things that, I, that couples with that um, is the rate relief that we are providing, is that we are a strong partner in economic development. It's interesting, the day that the merger closed, one of my nonprofit friends called me and said, there's a project, we need your help. Day one, it happened, and we've been seeing more of that ever since. So we've been recognized by Site Selection Magazine and by Business Facilities Magazine, this Editor's Choice Award for our, our work in economic development. We were um, considered a top utility for power and growth. So we want to bring economic development wins to South Carolina. It's not about, um, we don't want to compete. There are great energy companies all over the state. It's not about competing with which territory it gets to. It's about bringing them right here to South Carolina because rising tides lift all ships. And we want to help bring um, more business and more industry to South Carolina. So, no, you're not getting a thousand dollar check. Let's just, I'll put it out there for, to start with, from just to clear the air on that. That's, that's correct. Um, we, but we are giving $4.5 billion in customer relief through a 15% rate reduction. So you will see we put out a press release today, um, and that is talking specifically about that rate relief. There were several different choices that the Public Service Commission reviewed and considered, um, whether that was the cash payments, whether that was some of the proposals that were put forth before other, other groups that were involved in the three-week Public Service Commission hearing. And then there was the plan, the plan B levelized, which was the 15% rate relief. And that's what the Public Service Commission supported, and we certainly support uh, that decision it, it with, with reducing rates. So you will see um, this month that rate relief will be in your bills. You'll additionally see a tax credit this month. Um, so all the federal tax credit benefits, Dominion Energy is passing those on to customers. So you'll see that going forward this month, and you'll also see a credit um, for that as well. Our natural gas customers, but you'll see a small incremental change in relief for our natural gas customers as well. Um, so you'll see in the bottom of your page, the average customer for SCENG was paying, so if you had about 1,000 kilowatt, or 1,000 kilowatts of usage every month, you are paying about $147 a month on your bill. As of this month, the average customer's bill is about $125. So it's more significant rate relief than we were providing before, but there is another cash payment. So that'll be not just for residential customers, that's for industrial customers, commercial customers, all customer, all customer groups. Do you have any questions about that? I'm trying to be respectful of your time. But if you do and you don't want to ask them here directly, I'm happy to um, stay as long as you need to after to answer any questions. I, I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. How do you monitor the lifelong 15% guaranteed deduction? I mean, how is that monitored? The Public Service Commission. The they haven't monitored very well for us in the past. <laughs> I, I, I certainly can't speak on their behalf. Um, but that is, it's going to be, in fact, one of the things that the Public Service Commission has asked us to do is come back next year for, to review the rates, to see what cost-saving measures we've created. We've committed to doing that. So I think you're going to see, um, it was a 15-week hearing, or excuse me, a three-week hearing um, for this merger. So I think, I certainly can't speak for them, but um, we are committed to, we paid down significant debt that went along with BC Summer 2 and 3. Um, couldn't pay off, but did pay a significant amount. There is still some portion that has to, that is still on the books that we couldn't we couldn't pay all of it. So we are committed to. There will not be any additional debt accrued 
for BC Summer 2 and 3. So there will be, not be additional charges on customers' bills other than what's listed there right now, that, that 3%. So that's the commitment that we had. It's filed with the Public Service Commission as part of the merger agreement. Um, so it's contractual. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Is there a future for the land in BC Summer? It's a good question. So um, that land is a partnership between uh, between Dominion and Sandy Cooper now. So I think many of you maybe I don't know if you saw this, but um, before Dominion acquired Scana, um, Scana abandoned the project, and it, for the ta federal tax credits, it was much more financially. Uh, it was better for the customer for Scana to abandon that project and get those federal tax credits. So. Now that Dominion owns them, Dominion cannot and will not ever build those nuclear projects because the, the project was abandoned. Um, and it's my understanding, I saw in the paper about a week ago, that Santa Cooper abandoned the, the license for BC Summer 2 and 3. So I, I don't see those projects moving forward in any way. Dominion could have bought energy from BC Summer 2 and 3. Had they been built, we just could not be part of the construction project. But there, so BC Summer 1 is owned and operated by Dominion Energy. It's very similar, it's identical, in fact, to nuclear projects that we have in Virginia. So we're really comfortable with that one. To answer your question, there are a lot of uh, creative ideas that people are looking at for that land. I don't know of anything specific at this point, but there are a lot of ideas of other alternatives that are being considered. But it's, it's in the early stages because there's the, uh, the combination of this, the ongoing partnership between Scan and Santa Cruz, or Dominion Valley and Santa Cruz. Yes, sir. You, you mentioned the land, but what about the equipment that has been installed there? Is any of that recoverable? So, uh, that would be speaking for the, So, the question was what happens to the equipment that's at BC Summer 2 and 3 currently? Um, that's a good question. That a lot of it, from what I read in the paper, so this was prior to when Dominion purchased it, was um, is being sold and salvaged. So, that's what part of what St. Cooper has been doing. But I can't speak to, to specific um, equipment out there. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Yes, sir. Um, would you all have any interest in buying um, Santee Cooper? Good question. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so the question for the room was, is Dominion Energy interested in purchasing Santee Cooper? And the answer up to that is no. Uh, we have no interest in purchasing Santee Cooper. Um, it is not a secret that we put a letter to the Santa Cooper's CEO and board saying that we'd be happy to manage them. That was a public letter that came out. So we have stated that publicly, but no, Dominion Energy has no interest in purchasing Santa Cooper. Yes, sir. Dominion has a fabulous reputation for its terrible work. I'm on the board of several nonprofits. <laughs> How do I get my paws on some of your money? <laughs> good question. Good question. So for everyone in the room, the question is, Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation gives a lot of community. And we do, and we're really proud of that. We want to be a good community partner. So the question is, how do you how do you get access to some of that money? Um, so if you, if anyone in the room, I talk to me after, but I'll make sure everyone in the room knows this. So our, um, if you go to online and Google Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation, the application process is online. It's through cyber grants, so all the nonprofit has to do is go in and submit an application. It's about a three-page proposal that's put forth. And the nice part is it's a community investment board of employees right here in South Carolina. So that grant is being reviewed and considered by your fellow colleagues right here in the state. So we meet on a quarterly basis, and um, then the grants and the, the checks are distributed, and if you see me handing out big checks like this on a regular basis. So, I saw a question. Yes, ma'am. Gotten to know much about Lake Murray? Is there uh, to be many changes out there? Pine Island, selling the French land. Good question. So the question was about um, Lake Murray. Are we comfortable with it? How well do we know it? We have met with the Lake Murray Association groups multiple times, and uh, we Dominion owns and or Dominion manages other lakes in Virginia, so we are comfortable with lake management. Um, you, we do not anticipate seeing any major changes with with the lake. Um, in fact, I'm sure many of you have seen the lake levels are going back up. At, now, so I, I think all the landowners out there are really excited about that to have that back to normal. Yes, me. Are you guys going to start charging for use of the lake? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. Okay. I guess that's the first time. That's the first time I've gotten that question. That's a great question. I, that I'm aware of. Um, What's the question? 
Um, the question, are you going to start charging for the link? Not to my knowledge, um, but um, I'll be happy to find out. I haven't gotten that question, but I'll find out. Not to my knowledge. And the question, the other question was about Pine Island. Dominion Energy is, um, is keeping, that, keeping that asset at this time. I highly doubt that. To answer your question, I highly doubt it, but I will get an answer for you on that. <laughs> so, any other questions specific to charitable giving or the lake or BC Summer 2 and 3? So, what we've been trying to do over the past year, and is we certainly cannot speak for SCNG and the decisions that were made there. We are trying to move the state forward and and bring uh, bring stability to the state, bring stability to the region, provide great relief and support the, for the community. So what you'll see is um, reliability enhancements. You'll see cleaner energy options. We are very focused on grid security and modernization. Again, you'll see that we're giving a million dollars more per year in charitable giving across the region. And we are very, very focused on economic development. We want to bring wins in for the state. We want to lift the state up. There's been a, a pause button on economic development that some of our nonprofit, or excuse me, some of our economic development friends have told us. So we want to bring that back and reinvigorate our economic development works in the, in the Midlands and the coast and wherever, wherever we can across the state. Yes, sir. One other question. There's an environmental problem in the river of some sludge on the bottom that uh, Scanna decided to kind of ignore. Does Dominion have any plans to clean that up? So the question was about the Congaree River and some of the, the tar and equipment along the river, is that right? So I'm not part of those discussions, but my understanding is there are ongoing discussions about, about that project as we speak between the state and between SEEG. So I'm not. I don't know the specifics on it, but I know there are ongoing ongoing discussions about that right now. Yes, sir. Listen, I just want to thank you for your time, and I wanted to just tell the room that I've already had the pleasure of meeting with Kristen and Dominion for the Adopt Plus, and so we hear that there's going to be a community, but I've already seen it in action. So I want to welcome you, and thank you so much for allowing us to uh, question you. And already we're very excited about Dominion's presence here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, we're thrilled to be here. We're, we're thrilled to be here in a bigger way. Forgive my voice. Allergies have gotten to me, so I apologize for their asking this, but thank you for your patience with me this morning, and I'm happy to answer questions after. So I know um, we keep be respectful of your time. <laughs> Kristen, I'm impressed. That's a that's a tough topic to uh, to take on, and um, you were uh, certainly very accomplished and very bright. Also, to go to stand there and take those. Um, I don't know uh, if this tonight's club gives out cool mementos like we do, but if we'd like to give you a coin. It's got a picture of Paul Harris on one side and the four-way test on the other, which you're familiar with. Enjoys their presence day next week. We will stand and close in song.